Hey, welcome back to my channel. My name is Dr. TK and in today's episode, we are on part four of the infertility and manifestation journey of becoming a mom over 35. So stay tuned. Hey everyone, and welcome back to part four of the infertility journey. And in today's topic, we will be talking about in this video, manifesting my first pregnancy, okay? And so if you are new here and you haven't been able to catch up and join parts one or see parts one through four, I would highly recommend that you go and check those out first um, before watching part four today, just because I want it to make sense for you as to how we ended up here. So in part three, we were really talking about to have surgery or to not have surgery, okay? And so um, after the wedding, you know, had the two surgeries and then my friend was actually coming into town that March. So if you recall from episode number one, I had said that March was a very important month because it started this whole ball rolling in terms of me finding out all of the stuff regarding me needing to have surgery. Um, and that's when I first went to the doctor. Um, and here we are full circle a year later, we're back in March again, and I'm going to a live event. This was 20, wait, no, this was 2017. So the surgery started in 2016 and then it went over to 2017. I have to get my day straight. So. My friend was going to this event and truth be told, she had told me about this event before. And one of the things that um, prompted us to go was that it was being hosted by two black phenomenal women. And we really wanted to see what they were doing to be able to have a city tour and talk about business and mindset and things like that. Cause that was something that we were tapping into as well with wanting to have live events and also talking about the things that we're passionate about. So we thought it would be a great opportunity to go to someone else's event and also soak up all the good information. So I always share the story like when we walk into this room, I just felt like the Holy Ghost had hit our spirit. So it was four of us that went. It was me, my, one of my best friends, but from college, grad school, um, my husband and his cousin and his cousin was living, on, living with us at the time. So we were all hanging out at the house. My friend had stayed with us. The person that she was supposed to go to this event with initially did not come. Okay, like stood her up. So I had ended up buying a ticket at the last minute and it was like buy one, get one free. So the free was gonna go to my husband. So she ended up giving her other ticket to his cousin. So we all went to the W in Hollywood, had a great old time when we were out there. And when we walked into the room, we just felt the prosperity energy, <laughs> okay? So um, this particular individual, they have you stand, stand up if you've never been to one of their events before. And they end up seating me on the front row. But I believe that by divine timing, everything happens for a reason. I didn't ask to sit on the front row. I didn't ask to sit right in front of her. It just happened. And so what we had to do was talk about what are we hoping to get out of coming today and how do we, you know, get invited. So I had shared with her how I got invited. And one of the questions that I walked in with to that event was I had had a group practice at the time for my private practice. I was teaching at three universities. Um, but one of the things that I was desperately missing is tapping into my own personal brand. And if that sounds familiar to you, during the last few series, I was talking about having to start over from a previous marriage, having to find myself again. So it was almost like a continuous trend, but it also started to show up in my business, right? And sometimes it's hard for us to see that it's happening in both areas because what do we do as humans? We compartmentalize, we divide stuff up, right? Like it's only happening on my business. No boo, it's happening in your personal life too. And so I felt like this was a time where instead of me only focusing on helping other people grow in the mental health world, which I loved, right? I also thought that it was time, but I just didn't know when, to focus on my personal brand. So when I stood up, this is 2017, she said, you are going to shut down your physical space and you are gonna work only online. And I'm thinking like, does she not hear what I said? I have a group practice and I do therapy, but I soaked it up. I didn't say that out loud, but I, you know, it crossed my mind. But I said, Takesha, get it right. You here, she asked you to speak up. And I didn't know it at the time that I received, because it was a whole lot of other things that she said. I had a prophetic word spoken over my life. Okay. And so anyways, we went through the event and within an hour, me and my friend looked at each other and we were like, we buying whatever she got. 
So we end up buying what's called a success journal. Her name is Dr. Stacia Pierce. You can look her up. During the holidays, she probably got a sale on a journal, but look it up on her website and on Instagram, Stacia Pierce. And um, I'll see if we can link up her Instagram, at least in the show notes. And um, when we bought her journal, I took a picture behind her and her daughter, you know, my journal, whatever. They signed it, kind of like a book. And um, I joined one of her online programs until I was able to join her actual mastermind. That didn't start until that September, okay? So this is March, remember? So went about my way, ended the event, and I really dove into, because I'm a fast action taker, I dove into like doing a journal. In the journal, it had like, actually, let me go get it. So this is like the new revised journal. Um, looks like this, okay? Um, she has like different ones, like with um, flowers and stuff like that. Um, but now she, she actually made this one for the men, but I actually like it because it was going along with like the theme of my office with the black and the gold and then hit a pink. Um, so what you have inside is like five different tabs. One, two, yeah, five different tabs to represent pretty much every week of the month. And then you have a beginning, like you put your information, you put like some abundance things. And then she just walks you through, because I don't want to share all her intellectual property uh, without you having to get the journal yourself. She shares with you how to script, and I learned that in her course. Um, it also shares with you how to write your goals and really how to visualize. And the reason why this aligned with me so much is because I love vision boards, right? So I, ha I have a few videos up about that where I even show you how to create a, Gam a Canva vision board and we'll make sure to link that up too. So I went all in and I really started to focus on my health. And another thing that she had us create um, is based on our goals as we got closer to the end of the year though. Uh, but I did it in April or May, I think. And she said, whatever your vision is, make a vision board about it. And I also would encourage you to get a box and create like a manifestation box. And I had never heard of that before. I only heard of a vision board. So I went to, I don't know, a store, Walmart or something, got a box that's probably the size of a shoe box. And I went online and I printed out pictures. I printed out pictures of a, 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 a baby, right? I printed out pictures of me and I said, this will also be my body after I have a baby, even if I am over 35. Um, and then I also got like a onesie and I got just little things that will represent a successful pregnancy, okay? So I really got into it, I would say a, uh, like a affirmation that was my script in my journal every single day that pretty much was speaking life into me, okay? Also, I realized that my mind was so focused on getting pregnant at a certain point after my wedding and after the surgeries that I felt like I was taking a fun out of having fun with my husband, if you get me. And so I decided, um, without talking to him about it, I decided to throw away all of my ovulation kits, all of my pregnancy kits. I know those things cost money, but I'm like, it's taking a toll on my mindset. I just really want to focus on being the healthy and best version of me. And I know looking back that because I chose to focus on becoming the best version of me to prepare myself for the woman who's about to get pregnant, that was a requirement that I believe my higher power was waiting on me to do in order to give me this next level blessing, okay? So fast forward, I was going extra hard in the gym after these surgeries, like they said I can do abs, they said I can jump, go. Like I lost hella weight, got all the way snatched, right? Um, I'm gonna see if we can put like a picture right here of like my snatch waist on the video. Um, I know we can. So you see your girl, she is snatched, she is snatched, she is snatched, right? Had a whole photo shoot to tell you. And so moving forward, I started traveling. I was a health coach at that time too. Um, so I was traveling to conferences for the health coach. I was traveling to conferences for business. I was popping. Um, and then I went to the health conference in St. Louis and I had been to St. Louis. Um, I, first I went to New York for our anniversary. Then I skipped over and went to New York again with my family and DC. Then I had also, um, right after that went to St. Louis or maybe I'm getting them mixed up, but whatever. I went to like three trips in like a six week time frame. Crazy. So when I got back, I started to notice that my appetite was a little funny, right? And I assumed that maybe I had food poisoning. I have been eating out. Like when you're out for seven days, there's only so much good food you can eat. You know what I'm saying? Especially when you're on the go in places like DC and New York and you with kids and stuff, like it's a lot. So I thought that I have, um, you know, 
uh, like food poisoning. So I went to the gym one day. I used to facilitate like workout classes with like some of the guys and some of the girls. And um, one of the trainers um, that was co-facilitating the class with me, he was like, hey, yo, TK, um, you pregnant? And because I had got rid of all that stuff in my house, it was literally out of sight, out of mind. Like that's how detached I got from the process, which is really manifestation for me, right? Declare what you want, write it down, get a vision board for it, let it go, put it in the hands of your higher power or the universe, it will happen because you want it to happen, right? You've declared it so. And so I said, you know, that's a good question. And so he was like, what? I'm like, I'm, it's, a, it's a good question. So I went to Target bought a pregnancy test, but did not tell my husband. Now you would think that somebody who done went through all this stuff would be screaming to the world, y'all I'm about to take a pregnancy test. Nope. Because also with levels of disappointment I had been through, I don't want everybody asking me all these questions. And so I chose, and this was weird because I didn't even tell my husband. Um, it was a two story home at the time. I was immediately when I came in the house, he's used to me coming in the house, getting my shake, um, my protein shake and like hanging out downstairs for a little bit. So it was nothing. So I went in the bathroom and I did the pregnancy test. And that thing came up so fast, like positive. I'm like, oh, I ain't never seen this before. You know, when I've taken tests before, it just like draw you out for the whole maximum of the 15 goddamn minutes. <laughs> so it came up like quick. And I'm like, oh, I must be all the way pregnant, right? <laughs> so I got happy inside, I'm not gonna lie. But I think, and I didn't realize this until after when we, me and my husband sat down and talked about it. I think I was more in shock, like disbelief, like I don't want to tell nobody until I go to the doctor, <laughs> you know? And so um, I found out I was pregnant in June, in June, okay? Now to put some type of framework around this, I had just joined a $10,000 mastermind in that person's program. We had had live events lined up and um, yeah, I couldn't go because I was pregnant. The only thing I was able to go to was the conference, okay? Like that was in July and your girl had hella morning sickness. So I decided because it was a high risk pregnancy for two reasons. It was a high risk pregnancy, one, because of the two surgeries. It was also a high risk pregnancy because I was over the age of 35 where they literally said I had a geriatric pregnancy. Geriatric pregnancy, what the hell? <laughs> I'm like, you over 35, you geriatric according to having a baby, I guess. All this technology, come on now. But whatever, it, it is what it is. So I decided not to tell anyone outside of my mother. We didn't even tell my husband's mom because if she know, the whole family know because they got a big family out here. And literally when we had ended up telling her like later, it got out. <laughs> we waited until September. Um, I was small in terms of uh, showing. And um, we also had to figure out a way to tell um, my husband's son that I was pregnant because he had been so used to clearly being the only child. So um, we had a lot of stuff to clearly work out even though this was a blessing, right? So what would I like you to take away from this particular video? Um, number one, you can't control your destiny. Your destiny is already written. Um, one of the things is though, or I'm gonna say a problem is that people try to dictate how their destiny would happen. So if you go back to part one and part two, I thought that it was gonna happen when I was in grad school, but hell, that wasn't a good idea, especially when I ended up divorced, right? Um, I thought it was gonna happen easily and effortlessly once I found love again. What a doctor said, yeah, no, you need to have surgery, right? Then they had to do all this work with biopsies. It was still like a, if you do it, there may be complications. And so it didn't happen until I scripted out what I wanted. I started to act as if, in terms of not acting like I'm pregnant or anything, but more so acting like I'm the woman who is a mother. I am the woman who deserves to bear a child. I am the woman who is happily married and a bonus mom and I'll be a damn good biological mom. I had to take on the identity of the person who was going to bear this future child this God sin child, okay? And also, I just wanna put this out there, I did not stop the other part of my life because I was so sad over here. I figured out a way to deal with the sadness. And during this season, to be honest, I wasn't even sad. I was focused on, I'm going to get pregnant. You see how I changed my language? And then 
my thoughts started dictating my behavior. I started showing up, getting in health. Because at the end of the day, your body is different, women, if you under the ladies, if you're over 35. And just to be pregnant, your body just don't bounce back like that, right? It takes a minute. And it depends really on genetics, how your body is set up, your nutrition, are you breastfeeding, how your nutrition is after the baby, during the baby, before your pregnancy, you know? And then also, what is your activity after? So I wanted to take all of this in consideration because I knew what my expectations were for myself, okay? And I believe that it wasn't until I gave up the power of getting pregnant and just really taking on the part that I can take on, which is to do the do to get pregnant, but also make sure that my mindset is right to carry a child, that that's when I found out that I was pregnant, okay? So in the next part, I am going to break down what it is really, really like to be pregnant over 35. How does your body feel? And if you're a business owner, what happens to your business during that time? What happens in your relationship or marriage during that time when things don't go as planned? I will break it all down. So if you've loved this video, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. I got way more to share with you that is gonna get super juicy and transformational. Let me know what was your biggest takeaway in the comment box. I'll make sure to link up the resource to this journal in the comment box as well so that if you want to get it you can get your own and manifest and script out your vision um but i love you make sure that you like this video if you've enjoyed it today and i will see you in the next part of the series bye